Uh, hey everyone, so thanks for joining. So today I'll be talking about virtualization in React and what it means, how you can apply that in your applications to gain some performance benefits. So let's dive in. So before we start, uh, a little bit about me. I work as a software engineer at Clarisites. I am interested in open source and web performance or web, web ecosystem in general. And I am uh, I enjoy playing football and watching anime. Here are my uh, GitHub and Twitter handles. So uh, let's dive in. Uh, so if you look at the web applications these days, they are mostly list. And by list, I mean it could be a list of anything. It could be a list of posts for a social media application. It could be a list of messages for a chat application. Or it could be a list of uh, products or food for any e-commerce application. So lists are essentially everywhere in the web application. So uh, And by list, I mean I hope I'm clear that list could be any. It, it could be a list of images. It could be a list of tips or anything, and not just HTML lists. Right, so uh, so what is the problem exactly? So what we are used to, we get some data, we map over that data, and then we return some CSX, right? All good. So uh, the problem comes in, like let's say you create a component, you create a list component, you ship it to production, and uh, you encounter that okay, the list uh, contains of five, uh, contains a large number of elements, let's say five thousand or something. So. Uh, you, the, the end user will see a noticeable jank because it'll, uh, you have to pay a lot of uh, cost to render all the five uh, five thousand items uh, at your render time, right? So you, you have to do you have to pay a lot of upfront cost to render your list, right? So how can we improve that? Uh, so there's a concept called virtualization or windowing, so which essentially means that you only render what's in the viewport, right? So you don't pay uh, you don't pay unnecessary cost of rendering all the list items, uh, which may not even be visible to the user at the start. So uh, to give you a visual idea of how this looks, on the left, we have a regular list where uh, you render all the list items up front. And on the right, we have a virtualized list where you only render the items which are visible in the viewport depending on the scroll position, right? So this concept is uh, not just specific to web. So uh, in Android also, we have a widget called uh, Recycler View, which only loads the amount of data in memory, which is essentially visible to the user. And uh, in fact, this concept is also applicable in games where uh, the, the graphics renderer only renders the amount of data which is visible in front of the camera or around the character that is presently there, right? So this concept is pretty powerful as it helps us cut down a lot of render cost and you don't have to pay that, that, that amount of cost, cost up front, right? So, uh, so and, and how it works is you continuously, uh, so looking at the diagram, uh, if you look at the virtualized scrolling thing, you uh, as the user scrolls through the list, you continuously remove the DOM elements which are getting off the viewport and continuously render elements which are uh, being inserted in the viewport, right? So if you look at the demo, so I have pre prepared a simple list here. If I were to inspect the element, so you can see that the, okay, so we have a list here and we have some 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 list items here, right? So if I were to scroll through this list, you can see that uh, new divs are being continuously inserted, and the old ones are being continuously removed. So this uh, so at any instant of time, we only render what's visible in the viewport, which uh, also keeps the memory footprint of the application low. And so yeah, uh, all, all all the good gains with uh, in your application, right? So all good. So uh, so but yeah, obviously it's, it's not a silver bullet that can that using which you can like make your application like super performant in one go. There are obviously some trade-offs that you have to make and you have to essentially do a cost benefit analysis of whether it makes sense uh, to apply virtualization or not. So obviously there are accessibility concerns because uh, at any instant of time, uh, you can't be sure that uh, some element is in the DOM or not. Uh, your list won't be searchable, fully searchable because uh, uh, all the list items are not rendered. And uh, if your list item is heavy, if, if your list item has a lot of computation, it can potentially show jank, right? So uh, let me just edit this uh, compute function. So, so in this virtualized list, I have added uh, a compute function, which uh, essentially just is gonna do a large number of computation to render every list item. So if I were to scroll it now, you can see that there's, there's still a noticeable lag and that is because of the, the rendering engine is not able to keep up with the scroll. And that's why we see a noticeable amount of lag. So uh, the trade-off is that you, uh, yeah. So uh, heavy list items can potentially show giant. So you need to make sure that uh, you are keeping them as light as possible. Uh, so yeah, uh, presently in the React ecosystem, there are two popular libraries by the same author. One is React Window, which is like a pretty minimal library. One is React Virtualize, which has a lot of functionality out of the box. So in the demo, I have uh, used React window. So we, we are not gonna go into the code now. So what it essentially does is, uh, 
you you have a you essentially have a wrapper over your list and uh, you have a large you have a large wrapper which essentially decides on the scroll position like which uh, cells are to be rendered and which are to be hidden so yeah so some suggestions uh, from me if you were to virtualize your list so uh, i'd suggest that you pre compute all the data or in chunks if possible so if you do any sort of computation in your cell uh, it's going to get heavy at render time or uh, at run time so uh, your application will feel janky which uh, obviously kills the point of virtualizing your list or component and uh, you need to keep the cell dom as light as possible because uh, react has to do a lot of work uh, to essentially mirror your vdom to the actual dom that we have right so if let's say you have a you have a large nested dom tree that uh, needs to be uh, for each list if you have a large nested dom tree then react has to do a lot of work to essentially insert it into the dom and while the user scrolls react has to react also has to do work to remove that from the dom and then continuously add a new element so that can potentially slow uh, the scroll and uh, could result in a bad user experience and uh, uh, the, the most important suggestion is do not prematurely apply virtualization just because it sounds cool. Uh, you need to do an analysis and uh, decide whether it makes sense to apply virtualization or not. So let's say, uh, and that totally depends on the um, application that you have. So it might not even make sense to apply virtualization to a list of 5,000 ele elements, or it can even be applied to a list of 100 elements, right? So uh, so that that is the analysis that you need to do. So, uh, for instance, if uh, you have, let's say, a large number of elements and uh, all of them are rendered at once, so uh, if that uh, at render time slows down your application, you should obviously do it. And if you have, uh, if every element in your list is like super heavy, right, it, ha it does a lot of computation, it's some heavy widget or chart or something, so uh, you can have it, right? So uh, here are a few resources. Uh, so the, 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 there are also talks to uh, support this out of the box. So as, as in uh, we need we want some native support so it's still in talks if we have not finalized yet there's a spec that you can read through and there's also a web great article on web.dev on how you can virtualize long lists using that window so i hope uh, it, it's a great article i i'd suggest you check it out and so yeah that's all i have uh, thanks for having me and uh, thanks for the organizers for putting together this event and uh, I also have a session, so if you have any uh, doubts or concerns, you can join me on the session and then we can have a chat there.